Megan, we might not be feeding babies anymore, but based on feedback from our baby mama listeners, they are as excited about Amara Organic Foods as we are. I'm not surprised. Baby food options may have changed over the years, but the fact that parents want what's best for their babies never changes. Even though we're no longer feeding babies, we love that Amara offers delicious baby food with the most nutrition as affordably and conveniently as possible. And in the most inventive way, their baby foods come in an on-the-go powder. You just add water, breast milk, or formula, mix and serve. This allows you to customize the texture of your baby's meal, which is ready in seconds. You end up with a customized puree that has all the taste, textures, and nutrients of fresh purees. Pretty amazing, right? Totally. It might sound wild, but when Amara Organic Foods founder Jessica realized that by removing the water content from fresh foods, she could retain all of their nutrients and flavor without having to boil them to death, she partnered with an infant nutritionist to turn these super powders into a less processed baby food that is 100% organic, non-GMO, and plant-based. The most exciting part is that these powders make it possible to serve up quality organic foods at more affordable prices. Amara costs less than $2 per meal, which is less than the leading brands. It's no wonder that Amara was voted best baby food by The Bump, Good Housekeeping, and What to Expect. Learn more at amaraorganicfoods.com backslash D-I-J-F-Y and get 20% off their online shop using our exclusive code D-I-J-F-Y. That's D-I-J-F-Y for 20% off any purchase at A-M-A-R-A organicfoods.com slash D-I-J-F-Y. Short for Didn't I Just Feed You. My recommendation for anyone who wants to slow cook in their Instant Pot is to get a different lid for slow cooking because when you put the pressure lid on the Instant Pot, there's not enough moisture release in it. So you'll end up with like a soupier version of whatever you're trying to make. Welcome to Didn't I Just Feed You? A podcast about feeding kids. Hey, this is Megan and Stacy. Welcome to another Summer Solutions episode where we're giving you our best ideas for feeding your families in short and sweet episodes so you can get back to lounging by the pool or making your (laughs) 500 snack for your kid. (laughs) Whichever one, whichever one it is. Let's lean into the fantasy of lounging by the pool, please. Today, we're going to talk about slow cooking for summer, but a reminder before we get into it that there are even more ideas, solutions, and recipes after each episode in our amazing Didn't I Just Feed You community. Anyone can join the board message boards for free, so just sign up with an email on our community page on our website. And hey, you guys, if you are in a position where you can join us as a supporting member, we would love to have you. We recently changed our membership options and we want you to know about it. We now offer more choices at more affordable contribution points. And we switched the benefits to better match what you guys said you wanted most from us. Didn't I just feed you recipes and bonus episodes? So to learn more about all of that, go to didn'tijustfeedyou.com backslash community. Okay, so listen. If you've been here a long time, you know that this is not the first time that we've talked about slow cooking. It's also not the first time that we've talked about slow cooking for summer. But I guess I just feel like we both feel like it bears repeating that the slow cooker really can be your BFF right now in deep in July. It is hot as balls out. (laughs) Did I just say that? You did. (laughs) And it's true. It's true. And none of us should be running the oven all day to slow cook, braise anything. Turn on your slow cooker and let it do all the work, please. Totally. We'll have a link to the previous summer slow cooker episode in the show notes for this episode. But really the point here was to like combine everything, take ideas that we mentioned last summer, add some new ones, keep it short and sweet and deliver it to you right now in this episode. So, you know, you can get everything you need here if you're feeling like you're behind on episodes or you're just super busy and you don't know what to do because, oh my God, the kids are home and why do they need to eat so much, you know, and all that jazz, all that summer jazz. Okay. So Megan. Stacey. Let's back up a minute because this is a slow cooker episode, but 
I think of my slow cooker and my Instant Pot a little bit interchangeably, to be honest, except for like a few things that I think one does better than the other. So I think a lot of the recipes and ideas that I'm prepared to share today really could work in either. You just have to adjust the cooking time and the approach. But I don't know. Do you feel the same way? This is such a great question. I want to also acknowledge that we get more requests for slow cooker recipe ideas than we ever do Instant Pot recipe ideas. And last summer's episode, we really covered both. Like, oh, there's some specific things that I would only do in an instant or I would choose to do in an instant pot rather than the slow cooker. They are interchangeable to a certain point, right? Like anything that you could cook in the slow cooker, you can cook in the instant pot, but not everything that you can cook in the instant pot can you also cook in the slow cooker. And that's because the instant pot or any multi-cooker primarily is a pressure cooker, an electric pressure cooker. And And that's what it does best, but it does have a slow cook function among other things. My recommendation for anyone who wants to slow cook in their Instant Pot is to get a different lid for slow cooking because when you put the pressure lid on the Instant Pot there to slow cook, there's not enough moisture release in it. So you'll end up with like a soupier version of whatever you're trying to make. Whereas like a slow cooker has a nice fitting lid, but it's not necessarily super tight. And that's by design so that there's some evaporation of liquid um, as things cook along. And so it's closer to oven braising. And I think this is especially important for people who have found like me, and I've gotten a lot of DMs about this too, that they feel like slow cooker recipes are a little bit like soupy or loose or you're going to get even more of that if you slow cook in your multi cooker because of that tight fitting lid. So if you've already found that to be a problem with your traditional slow cooker, it's going to be exacerbated by using your Instant Pot. So, okay. So then we'll be kind of specific as we go through things. Yeah. And I I could even be like, I could even say, you know, I pretty much these days use my Instant Pot for basics and going back to our Instant Pot episode with Jess Dang of Cook Smarts would be a really great thing to listen to because it's like uh, broth, beans, and big hunks of meat. That's what I'm cooking in my Instant Pot, not full recipes like I would do in the slow cooker or very specific recipes. But yeah, let's let's jump in. What are like your top five slow cooker? Oh. Can I, is that too, I, is that yes. too specific? Okay. I don't know. I have a lot of specific ideas. Yeah. Okay. So how do you want to go through this? Because there's like you said, there's like beans and meats, there's categories, and then we can get specific within the categories. I think that's how we've been doing summer solutions. And I like it. Like, let's say, okay, beans, what are the, okay, let's start there. So So I'm going to go, I'm actually going to back up because I'm going to say that I use it for prep. (laughs) Yes. Because beans fall into prep. Yes. I use my slow cooker for a lot of prep. Okay. I think that's one of the things that it's really great for, for me. So beans falls into that. There is a way that you can just prep beans in your slow cooker. I'm going to be honest that if I'm using dry beans, I'm using my Instant Pot for that instead of a slow cooker. But for someone who wants to use their slow cooker, I think it works both ways. I like the Instant Pot results a little bit more, but we'll have a link to how to make slow cooker beans. But then I also like specifically like slow cooker baked beans. Mm -hmm. I like a lot. Uh, like doing things like curries, like curry chickpea, barbecue chickpeas is really fun in the summer because it's got that summer flavor. So again, if I'm taking dry beans, you can do it in your slow cooker or in your instant pot, but then specific bean recipes where I'm using canned beans, I often do in the slow cooker. Yeah. The thing I love about beans and the slow cooker is that it has a larger margin of error. Like the Instant Pot, if you've never cooked beans at all before, whether stovetop or slow cooker, and you put them under pressure, like guesstimating or using a recipe guideline, you don't know how old your beans are. I've had like wildly different results until I'm like consistent in buying the same beans and using the same cooking time with my Instant Pot which is why I love making like a big batch of black, like when I'm pulling a bag of black beans out of the pantry and I'm like, I have no idea how long these have been in there. Like, are these expired? I'm definitely going to put them in the slow cooker. Oh, that's so interesting because I'm definitely putting that in the instant pot. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Because I'm worried all, I'm like, 
I don't know. Is that anxiety? That's probably I, like I don't know. something in my personality. I'm like, I'm going to overcook these, but if I put them in the slow cooker, I can kind of babysit them without like having to really babysit them. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah, uh, I have put, I lean on the low end of my Instant Pot so that I don't overcook them. I feel like the slow cooker overcooks them because of that low and slow, like heat yeah. going on and on. And I'm not trying to babysit my beans. Like I'm not checking over and over. Like if I was, I get why you would want the slow cooker. Yeah. So I think it's a preference yeah. thing. I don't think it's like anxiety or good or bad. I will, I have put beans back on like they've been still too hard in the instant pot and that doesn't bug me because then you can just you know put them on for yeah. a few more minutes they go by the time they go up to pressure cook three or four more minutes and then let them slow release they're usually perfect yeah i also would say there's days where it's like i didn't prep dinner and so i and i need be like and all there are dry beans yeah. and i'll use the instant pot so i think just thinking about that too like oh do you have the time to like have the instant pot going all day are you going to be in and out between lounging at the pool or getting snacks or whatever and can you babysit them and if not maybe using the instant yeah. pot instead but you mentioned some specific meal ideas and i think we should talk about that you mentioned baked beans which i love yes barbecue chickpeas uh we've been making a lot of black beans in the slow cooker to turn into tostadas because that's like a really easy yeah. like feed a crowd kind of thing totally also i know it's like selling soup in summer is hard no it's not i want to i want to go there okay do you because i love there is a uh recipe from kitchen that's like this curried veggie soup with chickpeas in it that I make in the slow cooker all the time. It's one of my favorite things to like prep a batch of and then freeze. And then I can have cups whenever I want them throughout the summer. I don't know. It's just so lovely. I totally agree with you that summer soups, I love corn chowder. And I think that's great in there. I think a summer minestrone is great. Yes. And I think that a light tomato based or brothy soup is a really great way to use up summer veggies, especially as they're about to go bad. So I don't think you should be afraid of soup. Like I think yeah. the soup just should be lighter. And the same goes for chilies. I think of chili as a summer, like I love chili dogs. <laughs> Me too. Yes. Yeah. So I think of chili as having a place in the summertime. And then I like like a white chicken chili in the summertime. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a place for all of that stuff. Even though it can, it's very easy to think of it as being like cozy, warm, chilly yeah. weather food. But actually, if you just change your mindset, it totally works and it's hearty and it's fast and it uses up a lot of veggies and it's great. Right. That's very true. I'm so glad you said that. And then I think about like, oh, well, we still get summer colds or we have days where like the kids yes. come back from the pool and they're just like exhausted and they need like real sustenance and having something that's like brothy, veggie and bean packed is so awesome. Totally. Or even like a really light lemony chicken soup. Yes. I think that's great. Like, why wouldn't you eat that in the summer with like a big salad? It's a like, great light meal. Yes. Phyllis, pause for just a second. Let's take a quick break to hear from this week's sponsor. Last year, both Stacy and I discovered Nutrafol, a supplement that supports healthy hair growth by targeting the five root causes of thinning, stress, hormones, environment, nutrition, and metabolism. We've been so thrilled with the results that in 2022, we want to make sure every woman knows about Nutrafol, because as it turns out, 30 million women are impacted by weakened or thinning hair. Nutrafol offers two targeted formulas for women that are clinically shown to improve hair growth and thickness with less shedding through seasons when hair loss and thinning are normal, like postpartum and premenopausal, and all the times in between. In a clinical study, 86% of women reported improved hair growth after six months, and more than 1,500 doctors recommend Nutrafol as an effective and high-quality solution for healthier hair. Most importantly, Nutrafol is 100% drug-free. They use medical-grade botanicals in consistently effective dosages, so you get the most reliable results. And major bonus, you may also notice improvements to your overall well-being, including more restful sleep, less stress, and my favorite, better skin and nails. 
No matter your stage in life or whether you're experiencing thinning hair caused by stress, hormonal changes, overstyling, or some other reason, there's a Nutrafol product for you. Take their hair wellness quiz on Nutrafol.com for personalized product recommendations. Grow thicker, healthier hair and support our show by going to Nutrafol.com and enter the promo code D-I-J-F-Y to save $15 off your first month's subscription. This is their best offer anywhere, and it is only available to U.S. customers for a limited time, plus get free shipping on every order. That's $15 off at Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com, promo code D-I-J-F-Y. Can we go back to using it for prep? Or are we ready to move on from beans? Uh, you said beans and soup. Yeah. So I feel like we tackled two categories. Okay. Let's talk more about what you prep in your slow cooker. Okay. Meat. You talked about it in the instant pot. You know, you said beans, meat basics are your instant yeah. pot. But also I think that meat is really great to prep in the slow cooker too. All the same things that you can do with that big pork shoulder, that barbecue, that pulled chicken, that chicken for the enchilada. But also, the slow cooker is great for slow cooking meat that you then finish on the grill. So those bone-in chicken pieces, put them in there, flavor them up, get them nice and soft and tender, and then finish them on the grill. Ribs, we're going to link to a couple of recipes because slow cooker ribs are great. It's like that low and slow in the oven. It's basically the same thing. And then you finish it on the grill. So a lot that you can do with prepping meat so that it's ready to go and turn into dinner when you come home from the pool. We're really yes. all about the pool this summer, apparently. <laughs> okay. We are, and we're going to talk yeah. about pool snacks. We in are. Our summer solution episode. So this is an interesting thing. I said meat, like, Oh, I like to prep meat in the instant pot. And now I feel that I feel compelled to clarify yeah. that like, I like the instant pot for like, if I'm just going to cook a pork shoulder, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It's not a specific recipe or a specific flavor. Same thing with like chicken pieces or like I will do that. But if I'm going to like make something that's a specific meat recipe, I do like it in the slow cooker. Yeah. Like we love um, Mississippi pot roast. I wrote a recipe yep. for kitchen years ago, which is like pepperoncinis and ranch seasoning. It's like a bunch of packets and a beef roast. And you just like cook it low and slow until it's falling apart. And then we eat it like a Philly sandwich almost with a piece of cheese in a bun. Oh, yum. And I actually have a great slow cooker recipe that we'll link to for Philly cheesesteak sandwiches. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, there is still, there's still a lot of neat things that we'll cook in the slow cooker. I love, and I guess I should think of this as prep, like throwing a bunch of chicken breasts in there with like a jar of salsa and letting that cook or an yeah. envelope of ranch seasoning or an envelope of taco seasoning and making like a mess of shredded chicken that I, that we can yes, eat as tacos I love and sandwiches it. and stuff throughout the week. And you said taco, everybody talks about shredded chicken and then like also pork shoulder. Like that's always yes, like the yes. go-to, right? But actually I want to remind everybody that you can take a couple pounds of ground beef or ground turkey with taco seasoning and just put that in your slow cooker and leave it aside so that when you come home, you can make that like hard shelled taco dinner in like two seconds because you're just opening the pico de gallo, you're warming up the corn shells and the meat's already there cooking. And same with pasta sauces. You can slow cook a tomato sauce. You can slow cook a meat sauce, just have it ready to go. And then when you come home from whatever activity, you just cook the pasta and dress everything. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's how I'm thinking about it as prep as well. Or because you said cook the pasta when you get home or use your genius tip that you shared yes. with us where like you just cook pasta on the weekend when you're doing your other prep and then you can throw it in the slow cooker to coat. Yeah, baby. Uh, which is so smart. So, so smart. Okay, real quick, not to jump back, but like I feel like when there's this thing of like people are like, oh, just prep shredded chicken or pe prep a couple pounds of ground beef. And we said tacos. But I bet between the two of us, we could do like a little tiny rapid fire of yeah, let's like do it. what of ways you use that sort of like bulk yeah, pork I love or it. ground beef. So tacos, uh, we do sandwiches a lot with us like, too. and not yep. just barbecue, although barbecue sauce and then like a bag slaw makes an instant sandwich that ki my kids will gobble up. 
But there's lots of other stuff like you could do grilled cheeses with that meat in there. What else? Salads, topping salads, tossing with noodles. So, you know, pasta, like if you want chicken pasta, that's great. But also think of soba noodles, think of rice noodles, think of all that stuff. And then those, you know, rice noodles, for example, can be served hot or cold, which is great in the summer. Uh, You can use them for fried rice if you have leftover rice. Wraps, that's another version of sandwiches, right? But wraps and lettuce wraps. And spring rolls, like and spring rice rolls. roll wrappers. Those yes. are very fun with some chilled chicken or whatever you've got yep. in them. Yeah. Taquitos. Like yeah, you can even taquitos. do oven, oven baked or air fried taquitos with your bulk meat. And we can't forget the classic like chicken salad. Oh yeah, like mayo based yeah, or, mayo or based. no or mayo or no, mayo. <laughs> or no mayo based. Yes, the way you like it. I always think of it, even though I don't love it. I yeah. like, I know because if we have plain chicken in the house, Brian loves if I make a little chicken salad. So do I. I. Yeah. The chicken salad, I'm just gonna say. I know I'm sure I've done shameless plugs before, but I don't feel like I'm someone who does them all the time around Not the world. Really. But the chicken salad and winner, winner, chicken dinner, my cookbook is the freaking best. I love it so much. <laughs> Actually, like every time I think of it, I'm like, I want that now. It's so good. But yes, I love chicken salad. And in the summer, that kind of cold salad, I don't know, somehow it can feel more like dinner to me yeah. than in other seasons because it's light and it's refreshing. You can serve it with lettuce cups or on good, like, crusty sourdough bread that you pick up at the bakery on the way home. And it just feels like... With, like, a juicy summer tomato underneath it. Yes, exactly. Yes. Exactly. I'm going to throw in another crazy prep thing. I don't know if it's crazy, but queso. You can prep queso in your slow cooker pretty easily. We're going to link to a recipe. And then you can do things like, obviously, nachos. But maybe it's because I feed a teen now. Like taco night feels more exciting when there's queso than when I just put out shredded cheese. <laughs> feels more like Taco Bell or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? It feels more special. And you can do the the crunch wrap supreme kind of yes. thing is really fun. So you could like make loaded fries. Like you could buy frozen fries and just like if you haven't prepped taco meat in the slow cooker, you can easily prep it in a pan really easily and you have that queso waiting and just make like loaded fries or baked potatoes. I don't know. That just felt like a really fun, maybe you didn't think of it way that you could use your crock pot just to make dinner feel more fun. You know, summer dinners are a weird thing because, and actually summer breakfasts I want to talk about too, because you can use that queso for breakfast too. Yeah. It's like on one hand, you feel like there's a little bit more time because you don't have to wake up at 7.30 in the morning and rush out the door to the bus, or you don't have to rush to an early bedtime and no one's doing homework and this and that. So on one hand, it feels like there's more time, but on another hand, it feels like there's less time because the kids are around and it feels like it's hard to get anything done, right? Yeah. Or you just straight up lose track of time. Yes, totally. Like you're like, oh, it's only three o'clock. And then you look up and it's actually six o'clock. And yes. you're still out. And you're like, oh, shoot, we got to feed these people now. But the tension between those two actually gives me a different mindset about the kinds of things I want to make for dinner. Yeah. Where on one hand, it's like quicker and easier and I want to do the prep, but also it's like more fun and like I can be sillier about food. I don't know. So... Like I'm much more regimented during the school year. Right. So the idea of just having queso waiting in the crock pot feels like something I would do in the summer or I'm more likely to do in the summer. You know, I am pro dip for dinner. <laughs> no, oh, you yes. could, you could put your ground beef in the dip and then it's a whole like dippy in the queso. Yum, and then it's like a chorizo. whole hearty dip dinner. Yama, yama. When you said queso, though, my mind automatically was like, oh, that's obviously like you're just hosting neighbors or like a bunch of friends for playdates and that's going to be part of dinner. So it got me thinking about using the slow cooker for feeding other people, too. Great. Let's talk about that. My one of my favorite hacks. I know what you're going to (laughs) say. To heat up hot dogs. 
in yes. the <laughs> You can do it of them there. I learned this at a PTA event. Like that's how they serve hot dogs, everyone. Yeah. And it was brilliant. Which also means sausages. I know. I was going to say, I think we have a recipe for sausage with peppers and onions in the slow cooker from last summer. Yep. I love so that. So good. What else? Meatballs. There's yes. another great crowd pleaser that you can like cook from scratch and then or frozen. Heat. Yep. In the slow cooker. And that's really great too. So anything like that is really fun. More prep stuff. Also vegetables. Let's talk about prepping vegetables and vegetable dishes. I think that Greek food, like a lot of Middle Eastern food, has a lot of like slow cooked stewed vegetable dishes. So ratatouille is French, but like that kind of idea, like just a slow cooked eggplant and tomato dish, for example, is very like Greek, Israeli, Middle Eastern. And so all the summer vegetables, I love like zucchini, summer squashes, all kinds, eggplants. I love in the slow cooker. Yes. Like cooking them down until like almost they could be like a dip. It's like a yes. stew to a dip. There's a whole range in there. Like a caponata. Yes. I think of it I as love like all that. prime time stewed braised vegetables in the summer. But you mentioned cur like in the bean perspective, you mentioned curries, but you can do curries that are like purely veggie based in the slow cooker too. Yes. Like with totally. tomatoes and sweet potatoes and zucchini and summer squash and all those things you mentioned. And herbs are so great right now that like yes. even just doing eggplant and tomatoes with like a ton of fresh herbs in it can be either a pot, like something you serve over pasta or on yes. crunchy sourdough bread or as part of a dip. Like it is the dip over hummus, make hummus bowls with that kind of veg. Oh my God. From the slow cooker. I know. Yeah, like an eggplant ceviche. Is that what you call yes. it? Yeah. Over yeah. hummus. So delicious. So good. I also use the slow cooker often for either doing a big batch of corn. If yes. I really am not going to like turn on the grill, we're feeding a lot of people or maybe I don't have room on the grill because we're like grilling a lot of protein. I love the slow cooker for corn. I think that you can also do those classic boil sort of veg of like veg and protein too, like sausage, potatoes, corn, do that in the slow cooker and then serve it alongside whatever else you're eating or just with bread and butter. Like you're having a boil without all the stuff in it. Totally. And then just like you said, like potatoes too. Potatoes are great. You can either make potato salad or just serve potatoes on the side of ribs or barbecue chicken that you're doing on the grill. Just doing garlic Parmesan potatoes in the slow cooker and the slow cooker lets you like prep it and forget it so that you can just be focused on the grill. I love that. Yes. Also, you mentioned baked potatoes, but yeah. I know that you're not turning on the oven for baked potatoes. You can totally do individually wrapped baked potatoes, prep a big bunch of them and then heat them up throughout the week to have with your yeah. leftover queso. And then polenta or grits in the slow yes. cooker are really great. And then that's like a wonderful bed for any kind of grilled meat and vegetables that you're doing. And it could not even grilled vegetables, even fresh vegetables and grilled meat. And I just want to point out, because you mentioned potatoes, wrapping them, doing quote unquote baked potatoes in the slow cooker, that if you want to have people over and you're just feeling like stretched or whatever, between your slow cooker and your microwave, so I hope you listen to the Summer Solutions microwave episode, you can get like a whole bunch of bulk veggies done <laughs> and then just fire up the grill and literally like grill things up, put a rub on the meat and throw it on there. You know, it's, it doesn't have to be hard with all of these different kitchen tools at your disposal if you just use them strategically. Yeah. Okay. Are you ready to move on to dessert? Should we do dessert first or breakfast first? Oh, we can do breakfast first. I don't do that much breakfast. I have like one suggestion there. So okay. you kick Could us off on breakfast. Dessert? Oh, well, I just love steel cut oats in or groats in the Duh, slow I didn't cooker. Even think of that. Yeah. And I said grits as like an uh, or polenta as a dinner option, but that's wonderful in the summertime as a breakfast too. So breakfast polenta is so delicious. You can do even like uh I don't know if you've ever had Jamaican style cornmeal porridge, but it's the same idea, just a few grates of fresh nutmeg and some cinnamon. And then when it comes off, you can just put a dollop of yogurt on top. It's so good. Yes. Okay, the one thing that I was going to say is slow cooker French toast. 
Oh, yes. Like a casserole style. Yep. yep. And then I had a question for you. Have you ever okay. done eggs in the slow cooker? I have. Okay. Because I've seen that where people have done like bulk scrambled eggs where they'll like maybe crisp up bacon in the microwave, throw in bacon bits, some eggs, some chopped veggies, quote unquote, scramble it in the slow cooker and then turn those into breakfast burritos or sandwiches. Yeah. I haven't ever done that. I am remembering doing like a frittata or quiche style sort of casserole yeah. in the slow cooker for kitchen years ago that had like black beans and salsa and sweet potatoes in it. And there was a specific reason we did it in the slow cooker. It was like fulfilling a need. But now I'm like, what is the need? Yeah, I know. Because <laughs> eggs are pretty quick. I, I agree. I agree. That's why I asked you because I was like, I've never done it. But and I like they don't do take that long to cook in the slow cooker. So it's not like you can like set it and forget it, like do it the night before and yeah. then set it and forget it. So it is kind of an anomaly of like maybe you're meal prepping a bunch of other stuff. I yeah, don't know. I mean, no, I actually I do think that could be it. But we also think your microwave could be really good for that, too, I with the right vessel. That. Yeah. yeah. But it's again, if you're a meal prepper. And you've got a lot of stuff going, you're sauteing a bunch of things, and you'd rather some other kitchen tool take care of the eggs. That's an option. Okay. Dessert. We sign off. Desserts. I just want to talk about sauces. Okay. I thought you you were going to talk about dump cake. (laughs) Please don't make me talk about dump cake or dump dinners. (laughs) It's the thing. How can you have an episode about slow cookers without using the word dump? Okay. For anyone who doesn't know, this idea is that of dump dinners, dump cakes, is that <laughs> you're you have like four or five packets things, sometimes less with cakes. You have two or three things. You dump them all into the slow cooker, which like, what does that even mean to dump it into the <laughs> slow cooker? Like, are you not just pouring it? Are you not just emptying it? Are you not there's like a hundred other words? It's alliteration that, people are into. Yes. You mix it all together, you put the lid on the slow cooker and it like cooks itself. It's it's brilliant. But you know what? This is also the thing that people complain about, about slow cooker dinners in particular. It's like, oh, it's all one note because you're stirring everything yeah, together you at one time because you dumped everything. So I would avoid dump dinners if that's how you feel about slow cooker things. But dump cakes are legitimately kind of great because you can't, you do, you like <laughs> use a box cake mix. Maybe you use a can of pie filling, which we recently learned that Stacey yeah. loves. <laughs> or fresh fruit, because it is yeah. high, ta- like it's high fruit season, beautiful berries, stone fruit, all that. And you cover it and let it cook. And that's actually really fun, like to have when you're entertaining guests, because you it's hard to overcook it. You don't have to manage it. And you like serve warm, you know, brownies, strawberry shortcake style cake with like some whipped cream or vanilla ice cream. And people think you're just like a genius. Okay. So you are pro dump cake in the slow cooker. I want I am. to hear you say it. I'm, I am pro <laughs> dump it. dessert. <laughs> okay. I want to talk about sauces. I think that's a great place to end because fresh fruit plus slow cooker, some beautiful magic happens. But before we do that, you can make a bread pudding in the slow cooker. You can make quote unquote cobblers in the slow cooker. There's lots of recipes out there. And it's really summer fruit is really great for all these kinds of things. It's why Megan is pro dump dessert. Yeah, it fruit, works. The like, fruit saves us. Yes, totally. <laughs> but now let's just talk about without any of the like flour and cobbler cake piece, bread pudding piece. Let's just talk about fruit in the dessert and sauces. Yes. My like number one favorite thing to do with a bunch of peaches or strawberries in the summer is make a slow cooker fruit butter and fruit butter lives in this place where it's like not quite as thick as jam. So you can use it as a sauce or you can put it on bread or pound cake and sort of eat it jam style. And that's part of why I love it. And you don't like you don't have to add a bunch of sugar to get it to that consistency. You just let it slow cook for a long time. Oh, it is so good. I see a lot of people doing this with apples in the fall, mm-hmm. you know, like apple butter, or apple compote. So if you've never extended that thinking to summer fruit, like here is your encouragement to do so. Yes. 
especially stone fruit, yes. apricots, peaches. Oh, cherries are great in the slow cooker. You just got to pick them all. Yeah, you can make it as thin or as chunky as you like it yep. too, which is a nice thing about, because you let it cook for a long time and then you can run your immersion blender through it or move half of it to a blender, blend that and then add it back to the fruit, which is really, I just think is so wonderful because then you can be intentional. Like I'm going to make this fruit thing and serve it over a pavlova yep. or in an eaten mess sort of situation. Our no cook dessert episode would be a great one to listen to for ideas on how to use all the sauces for desserts. What other sauces? You mentioned pasta sauces, but are there any that we missed? Barbecue sauces? Yeah. You know, sometimes like people like to make cherry or peach barbecue sauce as a like summery spin on barbecue. I got really excited because you said barbecue sauce and then I was like, oh, duh. Hot sauce. If you have like oh, pepper yes. plants that are prolific, yes. throw them in the slow cooker and let them slow cook so you can make your own hot sauce with like garlic and onions. So good. I'm really glad you brought that up because also with tomato sauce, we have like August coming up with preserving season with a lot of the vegetables like we were talking about caponata and eggplant and all of those things. If you just find yourself with an abundance of any of that stuff, fresh herbs too, just turn it into a slow cooked sauce and then jar it up or freezer preserve it for the year ahead. It's a great way to yes. use it. Yes. Okay, Stacy, we promise to keep these short and sweet. So let's take this conversation to our Didn't I Just Feed You listeners community. We hope that you've joined us there. If not, join for free at didn'tijustfeedyou.com backslash community. And if you want those bonus episodes and other goodies, join our supporting community. You can also keep in touch with us on Instagram where we are at didn't I just feed you or by signing up for our newsletter. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to didn't I just feed you wherever you get your podcasts. And if you're already a subscriber, guess what? There's even more you can do for us. <laughs> Leave a late rating or a review. Those help other busy cooks find us. And they also just bring us a little bit of joy. A huge thank you to our editor, Samantha Gatsik. I'm Stacy, And I'm Megan. Stay sane and well fed until next week. Be sure to subscribe to Didn't I Just Feed You wherever you're listening. And don't forget to rate and review.